This is the city we call our own. These are the stories of the people we call our neighbors. This is the heartbeat of our hometown. Naperville, this is Real Talk. Welcome back to Naperville Real Talk. This is the podcast where we feature the best people and places right here in Naperville, the greatest suburb of Chicago, no doubt. My name is Chris Grano. I'm with Keller Williams Infinity. I'm super excited about today's guest. So we are right here in downtown Naperville at one of the hottest new spots, Enclave Coworking. And I'm here with Ariana Serna, the head of sales and marketing. Welcome, Ariana. Hi, Chris. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Lovely absolutely. to be here. So we had a good time. We, had, we you know, this is a little bit more kind of sit down, but we had a good time shooting a video that I can't wait to share. Probably out by now if you're watching this, but um, you, know, you guys have to check out the space here at at Enclave. Um, why don't we start talking about the business for anybody who maybe hasn't seen the video or isn't aware of the business? Tell us uh, what's the concept and how did it get started and where is it today? Yeah, good question. Thanks again for coming. We're yeah. big fans of yours and all the videos that you're doing in downtown Naperville. Thank so you. really happy to be sitting down with you today. Yeah. Uh, so Enclave is a co-working space that is dedicated uh, to suburban professionals. So folks who are looking for a really elevated workspace in the suburbs. We have seven locations right now. We're growing really quickly. New location about every two months. Uh, is our rate, and we're looking for uh, you know folks who are living in Naperville, for example, who maybe have a lot going on at home, want a more quiet, professional space to work, uh, maybe network, perhaps, uh, but don't want to have to go all the way downtown, right? So yeah. we're right here on Main Street, right above Jenny's Ice Cream. Um, I smelled it when I came up. <laughs> yeah, there you go, exactly. Uh, and so you know, it's just really nice to have a place that's close to home. Uh, so you can still be in the mix in your community, but still have a really nice nice place to, to go and work. Um, so we were founded by uh, Bobby Kelman. He and his wife uh, moved to LaGrange from the city. He's from Evanston originally. They had two young daughters, mm. and they realized that there was no really natural meeting place for them and their, their friends and their neighbors uh, in LaGrange. And so our flagship location opened up in Glen Ellen in early 2020, right before <laughs> great timing, <laughs> the mess that 2020 was. And so it opened up as, you know, a, a traditional kind of social club and lounge. Uh, our first location actually has climate controlled, uh, a climate controlled wine cellar um, and a really beautiful BYOB bar. And, you know, later in 2020, the need for uh, remote work exploded. Right. Okay. So. so is that where things kind of expanded? So it originally started out more of a social concept? Yeah, that's right. So, you know, for us, it's it's really important to be a nimble team that is, you know, we're a team of entrepreneurs ourselves. Right. So it's important to listen to our membership and folks were saying, hey, I'm, I'm using this space professionally now, right? So mm. now, fast forward a few years later, we have things like private offices and monitor storage and lockers yeah. uh, where you can leave your things. So you don't have to like things back and forth anymore. You can really come into our spaces here at Enclave and, and make yourself at home. That's neat. I think we, you know, we, we mentioned this uh, in our last conversation, but every great business starts with a need. And so for you guys to be able to recognize that, and that's the beauty of entrepreneurship, right? I mean, yeah. if, you're, if you're some big corporation, it's very difficult to pivot like that. And so to be able to say, okay, here was our original idea, which is valid and, and needed. And then here's this other way that we can serve our clients as well. Yeah. And to be able to do that. So pandemic time, I mean, what was that like opening up? So did you open up like just prior to the lockdowns or just after the lockdowns? Or? Just prior. <laughs> so this predates me. Okay. I joined the company later. Okay. But if you take a look on our social media pages, uh, Enclave Coworking on Instagram, for example, you'll mm -hmm. see, you go back a couple of years and you'll see folks wearing masks inside of our spaces. Right. Um, you know, things that I think are really indicative of the time that we were living in. So yeah. to your point, I think as an entrepreneur, it's important, right, to find uh, a need that needs filled, yeah. right? But it's even more special when that need is being filled by someone who is from the community, yeah. right? So. We have such an emphasis on community here at, en at Enclave because unlike other co-working spaces that might be located you know, downtown, 
the people who you see in these spaces are your neighbors. Yeah. Right? right? Like, mm -hmm. your kids go to school together. Yeah. You know, you run into each other at the grocery store. You might have the same realtor. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. You know, and so the emphasis on community is, is something that really came up naturally, and it's something that we really paid attention to. So we work from the spaces ourselves. We host, you know, uh, community events. We partner with folks like yourself in the community because it's important, right, to make sure that you're catering to people who live in the community that you serve. It's really interesting, too, because I've had a chance to, you know, kind of go on the website and, and check out some of the different spaces that you have, and they all have their own character yeah. because, you know, so obviously this, this podcast is focused on Naperville, but a lot of our viewers and listeners, you know, are from around Chicagoland and obviously are familiar with some of the other communities. And so they know, and if you're not from Chicagoland, you might not know this, but there's just every suburb has its own character yeah and to your point its own community i mean neighborville's a city of 150,000 people right but you kind of feel like everybody knows everybody yeah and so it is really neat to be able to walk i mean i can't tell how many times i've walked up and down downtown and you know people are yelling out of cars and oh hey you know do you see your friends all the time so to have that kind of a community and a place where you can go and you know run into each other when you're getting some work done or like you said have a drink Absolutely, yeah. So what's interesting to me about that, we were chatting right before this started. Uh, you know, I'm from San Francisco originally, right? And I moved here right as Enclave was starting, actually. Um, and so what has been fascinating to me has been learning about the different personalities that each suburb has yeah. in Chicagoland area, right? For example, Highland Park is another space that we've opened recently. There's an incredible amount of civic pride there, mm -hmm. right? You can imagine why just about a year ago, right, with the horrible shooting that right. happened, right? And so for us, it's how do you enter into these communities and say, hey, we're the new kids on the block, right? We're here to learn from you, yeah. right? You show us what's important to you, and we want to give you a product that you will actually use in your community to better your business, your neighborhood, uh, your friendships, right? And so at each enclave, you can find pretty similar things like a beautiful lounge, private offices, conference room, but each space is different, right? Because it, yeah. it has to be by, by necessity. You know, what's interesting too is, I love kind of just the shape where conversations take us, but such a trend in, in marketing, I'm sure as a marketer you appreciate this, for a long time it was like the big brands and pushing the consistency of their brands and the yeah. look was the same and you know places that had physical locations yeah. the design of those locations was the same right i mean like if you walked into a starbucks or a mcdonald's or whatever 20 years ago they all looked exactly the same right you knew what you were getting right because they thought because that was the part of the deal right exactly is the consistency yeah. And now, if you notice, all of like the remodeling that goes on and even the messaging and the marketing is very localized, very unique and tailored because I think we're, we're getting tired of like cookie cutter. Yeah. Right? And that's what I love about Enclave is it's like it's the absolute opposite of cookie cutter. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it feels homegrown, yeah. you know, and it feels tailored to, to your needs and to your community. Yeah. Um, so with that in mind, so tell me, because this idea of remote work I mean, it's been around, mm -hmm. but I mean, never before was it shaped in such a way yeah. than by the pandemic. Yeah. So tell me in the time that you've been with Enclave and how have you seen in mean, just the last couple of years, like how has that shifted and ebbed and flowed? Gosh, it's such a fascinating question. And it's one that we spend obviously a lot of time thinking about. Um, you know, I think before the pandemic, right, remote work, I think, did exist to your point, but it had a lot to do with the certain, with, you know, certain industries, yeah. certain professions, titles that people had. Um, and now it seems like it's table stakes, right? People across every industry and every profession are, are really calling for it. Yeah. And what we've seen is really a trend in people who, you know, maybe moved to the suburbs for the first time or realized how important staying close to home was for them and who aren't, you know, they're not willing to give up time with family to be in an office, yeah. right? That isn't a decision that I think you should have to make, right? You should be able to both grow 
professionally and also invest in your family and your loved ones closer to home, right? And I think sometimes now people feel like they're having to make that choice and I don't think that's a choice anyone wants to have to make, right? Yeah. So in terms of you know how remote work has changed, I think it's people really thinking about what's important to them and bringing those priorities into their professional life. Whereas before, maybe professional and personal were a little bit more boundary. I don't know if that resonates for you. I know, you know, you have a family at home, but you also have this amazing business that they, that you know you're growing. So big time. You know, it's it's funny to me is that I think pre-pandemic, and I hate I even hate even talking about it, but it's just it is what it is. It's a reality, yeah. right? Like, but <laughs> but but I think like then you know in 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 jobs I had in career um, prior prior to real estate, and then in real estate, I think I always looked at work from home as like a luxury. Totally. Right? Because at that time, I mean, because you couldn't for a long time until the technology enabled us to. Yeah. And then once the technology enabled us to, it was like, wow, I get to work from home. Yeah, yeah. This is great, right? I can come down to my computer in my pajamas or whatever. And um, so I remember loving those days. And then, then the pandemic changed because then we were all forced to work from home. Right. And... And kids were home. Yeah. Right? So then that really, then worlds like really collided and then you weren't getting your space. Right. And so now we're in this, now I guess post-pandemic world where it's like, obviously companies are deciding whether they're going to allow it, whether it's going to be part of their plan. But I mean, I think it's really, and obviously it's, it's shifted real estate too, which is right interesting for me because I think people, it really highlighted the commute. You know, like, right. I mean, people not only to have like um, you know ability ability to be um, with family or you know closer to family, but like now I don't have to drive two hours a day. Right. Or now I want a bigger space. Yeah. With a yard, right? Because right. I spend so much time at home. Yeah. And and same thing with the office, right? Like it was, it's like okay, I don't. You mean I don't have to drive into the city, you know, for the office, and or maybe I'm taking the train and. Right such hassle, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And I mean, you know, let's call a spade a spade. I think there is a lot of privilege in being able to require work from home, sure. right? Or remote work. Yeah. But I think once you identify that that's a possibility for you, it's difficult to look the other way, right? We have folks coming to us who they live maybe in big, beautiful houses and they, they have, you know, an at-home uh, office. Yeah. But they still have young kids at home. Yeah. They still have a dog that barks every time <laughs> the mailman comes up. Yep. You know, they still have a spouse in the house. Um, and so I think there are lots of people who are now starting to, as remote workers, they're starting to think, well, where can I find that third space, right? And as consumers, we're starting to think, well, maybe companies should cater more towards me, yeah. right, than they were before. It's funny, too, because like you and I are, not too far apart in age, um, but I think we're of a generation, and you tell me if I'm wrong, but I mean, for most of my adult working life, um, really for all of it, cell phones have been, you know, high tech, and, and I think I've always had email on my phone throughout all my working career. Mm -hmm. And so there was really, I never really lived in a time where there was this separation between work life and at home life, mm. like maybe there were for our parents, right? Where you. Yeah. Where even if you had even if you had like an executive job, I mean, yeah. for the most part, when you left the office, that was kind of it. Right. And so you had that natural separation. I was just having this conversation with my wife the other day. It's like, there that doesn't exist anymore. Right. You can set boundaries with your job or with your clients or with your yeah. customers, but you're kind of all living in the same world all the time. And that's where the trick about you mentioned the dog and the kids and all that, because I have I have an office at home, mm -hmm. and I like it. And yet, I can, <laughs> and yet, the doors aren't totally soundproof. <laughs> and, you know, and then there's just that feeling of, oh, I'm home, so I should help if my spouse needs help with the kids or whatever. And, right. Uh, things are a little dirty, I should help pick up, and then I step away from my work, yeah. right? Yeah. And isn't it kind of funny how, like, we all come back, like, now full circle? Yeah. And I think we're at Enclave, like, you're providing something that wasn't there, right? Like... Like you say, a third place, because it's like if 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 work's here, and home is here, and I don't really want to go all the way here. Yeah, you're literally providing like that that happy medium. Yeah. So I think what's interesting is uh, before this role, I was actually a, a recruiter, so I worked underneath kind of the HR umbrella, 
And what's interesting now is I think this really dynamic push and pull between companies and their employees, right? Where companies want their employees to come into the office or certainly they want them to meet up with their colleagues and their, their boss, right? Yeah. To collaborate. We all know that we're more, uh, you know, things happen faster, mm -hmm. right? When we're around each other. Yeah. Um, and on the other hand, employees, we don't want to go into the office. But we also don't seem to want to stay at home. <laughs> right. So it's kind of like, yeah. what are you supposed to do? Yeah. You know? yeah. And so I think companies and employees both are kind of in an interesting standstill. And, and there are companies like Enclave who are really trying to provide solutions to meet people halfway, right? Yeah. And I think what's important is finding uh, the solution that's accessible to you, right? So at Enclave, we try to stay really accessible. Most of our spaces start at just $100 a month, right? So yeah. anyone could, in theory, be a part of our membership. That's really important to us. Yeah. Uh, but if that's a stretch, maybe you're a student, right? There are so many libraries, too, that have free spaces. Oh, yeah. Right? And you can just go down the street and, uh, you know, have a nice place to work that isn't necessarily a crowded dorm room, for example, right? So I do think that companies have started rethinking the way they cater to consumers. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, I think what's most important is when it comes to companies like Enclave, it's not just catering to consumers, but again, it's connecting with the community, yeah. right? And serving them in a way that feels really meaningful uh, to the people in Naperville, like yourself. So across your locations in Chicagoland, do you see like common themes in who your clientele is? Like, yeah. like, do you have different avatars? Like, who those people? Who those people are? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Avatars is a good way to put it. Uh, the the different players. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, absolutely. So we have a lot of remote workers, obviously. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of entrepreneurs. Okay. So folks like yourself who are general contractors or realtors and need a place to meet with clients, mm -hmm. right? It's not super appropriate always to meet with them at your home. Right. Right? You're starting a new business. Maybe you don't have the money to take out like a 10 year lease in a traditional office building, right? But yeah. you don't want them like around your kids or, right. you know, there's right. just like a level of boundary, uh, you know, level of boundaries that is, that is nice there. Um, but you also, you know, need a nice professional place to take them. So Enclave is a great option for that. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of entrepreneurs, we have interestingly, I read a report, I think it was in Yahoo Finance. Uh, earlier this week, they were talking about how women have, or rather men, have let go of remote work mm. and have gone into the office at a faster rate than women. Mm. Okay. So we do have a lot of women in our spaces who say, you know, I have a lot of responsibilities at home, or maybe I'm not really ready to like leave my community, right? Yeah. Um, but I also, again, I'm not getting that much stuff done at home, Yeah. like posted up in my kitchen, on my kitchen counter, you know, with like the hectic mm -hmm. world around you. Uh, and so we have a lot of women coming into our spaces as well. So it's really interesting. Yeah, it's an interesting time. I hesitate to hypothesize on why, but it's, it's interesting to, to hear that. So do you, I mean, would you say age range, it's, it's across the board? Um, it is across the board, but I'll tell you, because we're in the suburbs, we tend to skew a little older than like the traditional social club in mm. downtown Chicago, okay. right? So I would say our sweet spot is normally 35 to 55. We do have some folks who are younger, some folks who are older. Yeah. Um, but you know, folks who are a little further along in their careers and are just looking for really nice elevated space to work that's not necessarily a coffee shop, though I do love a good coffee shop, right? right. Shout out Sparrow Coffee over in yeah. the corner. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> love that place. Um, and, you know, we're also looking for to kind of uh, increase their professional network. I think that's important to folks our age as well. It's funny that, yeah, you mentioned the coffee shop because that was like for the longest time, you know, yeah, go post up at Starbucks or Panera, your local place, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but it's like, you know, the espresso machines whirring in the background, the, the yes. blender's going. Yeah. It's, it's hard, you know. During the school year, every day at like 3 p.m., there's right. like an influx. The high school empties <laughs> out, yeah. Where do they all come from? I yeah, know, exactly. Yeah. Exactly what you it mean. always happens right as you're getting on like a Zoom <laughs> yes. call or, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, always the break. But I, the 35 to 55 makes sense, though. I mean, because that's, you know, you got a prime age for active kids, you know, I mean, and again, like, so it's summertime for me. Um, my wife, um, just as of the end of last year, you know, left her full-time career, 
staying, taking care of the kids at home. Oh, wow. So I mean, that, ho that house is buzzing all the time, you know? Yeah. And, um, and it's interesting because there's days that I love being around it. I, I was just talking with another entrepreneur um, this morning. I love the ability to have breakfast with my kids. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, or take them to camp or whatever. Yeah, exactly. I mean, as, as long as the as my schedule allows, we could take a break and do that. I mean, there's. I was telling you before we started, if I have a particularly early morning workout and I need to catch 20 minute snooze on my couch, I can do that. But, but so those are the perks. But then the reality there of like just constantly being being entangled. Um, so let me ask you then, so let me shift on to kind of city suburbs because you guys are really um, primarily located in the suburbs of Chicago. Have you seen companies make that shift from office spaces in the city out to the suburbs to try to kind of meet their clientele halfway? What have you seen there? Yeah, so you know there are some larger companies that, you know, I'm thinking about like the Deerfield area, mm -hmm. right? There's so many large corporations out that way. Yeah. Um, what's interesting though, is that you have kind of pockets of employees all over the suburbs, yeah. right? So if I have an employee who lives in Naperville, driving downtown is just as far as, you know, driving to oh, yeah. Lake Forest, yeah. right? It doesn't yeah. save you any time, yeah. right? So. Uh, there are companies who I think are toying with kind of a hybrid work model where you come into those spaces for larger meetings and you get to work from home the rest of the time. Yeah. Um, so, you know, meeting their employees halfway. I, the exercise that I like to go through is, uh, you know, I encourage people to pull up Google Maps <clears throat> and look up like an Equinox, mm. right? Yeah. These kind of luxury uh, spaces that I myself has, have also enjoyed in the past, right? Um, that really only exist in downtown Chicago, Yeah. right? And when we look at the demographic of people in suburbs, there are more people and there's more money in the suburbs than there is in the city. And yet there are places like Equinox that don't cater to folks in any of these suburbs, right? So you find yourself moving out to Naperville, for example, and you think to yourself, well, where am I supposed to go, right? Why is it that these things that I really enjoyed in my previous life, you know, I can't have here, even though I'm making more money now, yeah. I'm more likely to invest in these things now. Um, you know, it's kind of an interesting uh, paradox that people find themselves in. And so it's nice to have sure. companies like Enclave, you know, who are, who are catering to, to folks like that. Although I have heard someone recently said that downtown Naperville, to them, feels like West Loop. So you guys are doing something right here. You know, it's so funny. Yeah, it's so funny because there, there was always, I mean, I've been a Chicagoan, a suburbanite my whole life, yeah. and, uh, but grew up closer to the city um, in the near west suburbs. And there's always, it's like a meme, right? Like when people, like if you, even today, like on TikTok, like you'll have people saying like, you know, oh, these people from Naperville came into my restaurant tonight in the, in the you know, in River North and blah, blah, blah. And it's like always making like the jokes about the soccer moms and the, you know, the dance dads and whatever. But it's so funny because I think Naperville has really totally uh, shifted that view. And not just Naperville, there's other great suburbs too, Absolutely. right? Hinsdale, yeah. Western Springs, other with a, with a good feel. But what's unique about Naperville too is just the size. Yeah. Like I always kind of joke, um, once you move here, you don't ever have to leave, yeah. right? Like there's everything here for you. Yeah. And so, and what's neat too is like to offer a space like this. Now there, really, now there really is everything here for you. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can come downtown, and you, know, you can catch live entertainment. Yeah. You can you can work here. You can go grab yourself an amazing meal. Yeah. So speak to the social aspect of it too, right? Um, the original concept for Enclave, um, I think that's brilliant. I mean, we were talking when we shot our video here. I can't tell me how many times I've come down here, and no offense to any of the restaurant tours down here, you have great establishments, but like, it's hard to get a table sometimes. And so you're sitting, you're waiting, maybe I'm not important enough, but you're like, you're like waiting, you know, and you could grab a drink at the bar or something, but like there's times we've gone down the street to a different bar, yeah, and then we'll come back. So I love the idea of coming here yeah. and having a glass of wine. I mean, it is an interesting, an interesting concept. Uh, something that you said really made me think, you know, there used to be, I feel like, at least when I was growing up, like a negative connotation about moving to the birds. Oh, totally. You know, it was kind of like, oh, you're one of those now. <laughs> um, and I think, I think the pandemic 
in large part really changed the way we yeah. think about things like, you know, I live in the city and I, I, I often joke, I'm like one parking ticket away from moving to Naperville <laughs> yeah. myself, right? You know, yes. so little luxuries like a driveway or more space for your kids. Yeah. You know, those are things that I think are really invaluable for people, better school districts, right? Yeah. And so we're out here in the suburbs because I think people want to be in the suburbs now, right? It's not necessarily yeah. out of necessity, but it's like Enclave spaces are really beautiful and elevated, right? And I'm biased, but you know, hopefully people will come oh, and I check agree, it out for agree. themselves. Yeah. <laughs> but you also have places like Allegory downtown, mm -hmm. right? The new Gordon Ramsay restaurant also opened up. Yeah. Uh, in Lake Forest, you have amazing restaurants like Le Colonial, which is, as far as I know, only in Lake Forest and in downtown Chicago, right? So yeah. you do have these amazing kind of companies and brands who are moving out to the suburbs to cater to people. And I agree with you. I think people need to come spend a, you know, more time out here in, in Naperville. I think they'll be impressed. It's, um, I think a lot of it's generational. Um, yeah, sure. And, and, and there's, all, there's like a time and a season for everything, right? Like everybody, um, I think it's a pretty well-established trend that you, you, know, you go to college, you get your job, in, your big boy, big girl job in the city, yeah. right? And you do that for your, often for your 20s. Yeah, yeah. I have plenty of friends and family members that have done this exact pattern, you know? <laughs> and, then, and then sometimes, you know, you have kids. If you're, if you're planning on having kids, you have kids. And then all of a sudden you kind of look around and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm tired of lugging my groceries, you know, from the grocery store without, maybe without my car. Right, right. You know, I mean, that's a whole other thing. I mean, I, it, it's, it's almost like opening up the doors to a magical kingdom when I have people move from the city. I'm like, you can park anywhere you want to park. <laughs> It doesn't cost you any money. <laughs> like, it's Parking amazing. is free up here. That is amazing. Oh my goodness! Yeah, and they're and they're constantly working on improving it. And and yeah, and if and I think when people like come out here, then they're like like to your point, like oh, I didn't know all this. You know, they think it was like no offense, Applebee's, but they think it's like a bunch of Applebee's, right? And like totally, <laughs> like yeah, but it's not. Yeah, and places are choosing, businesses are choosing places like Naperville to anchor. You know, it's like you go on the list, like Gordon Ramsay, right? And you go on, you look at the list of Ramsay restaurants, and it's mm -hmm. Vegas, L.A., Boston, Chicago, Denver, Naperville, Naperville. right? Like, yeah. specifically Naperville. Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think businesses would be silly not to, right? There's such a vibrant community down here. And I say that as someone, you know, I mentioned earlier, I'm from San Francisco, I live in Chicago now, right? You know, I'm, I'm used to these kind of larger city environments, but, but I, you know, I love coming downtown here, right? I can shop at Ulta and then go across the street to the Nike store and get all my, my errands done, you know? But apart from those larger brands, I think to your point at the beginning of this conversation, there is kind of that small town community yeah. feel, right? So it's like, in this space, for example, we have members who are literal neighbors and they've uh, referred each other and they mm -hmm. love coming to work together. And then we have other members who don't know anyone and join a space like Enclave because they're able to kind of expand their network. Maybe they've just moved to Naperville, right? Yeah. And so meeting folks who are like-minded in a space like this is really exciting for them. So I do think it is really the best of both worlds and I would say for folks like myself a year ago, you know, don't sleep on the burps. I think there's some really, really cool things happening out here. Yeah, absolutely. I'm curious too, because you, you know, you mentioned being from San Francisco, so you kind of have a unique perspective. Um, what's the What's the difference? Like, talk about like, does, they, does San Francisco have that same sort of city, suburban, hmm. like not tension but juxtaposition? Hmm. Um, do people often like live in the suburbs of San Francisco and then commute in or what's that like out there? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, SF is interesting. It's an interesting beast because you're talking about Silicon Valley all of a right. sudden, yeah, yeah. right? So while you have a lot of people who live in the suburbs and commute into the city, you also have tech giants who are outside of the city in like Mountain View, right? right. So LinkedIn, Google, Microsoft, right. their camp, literal campuses are, you know, an hour and a half uh, with traffic outside yeah. of the city, right? And so what you've created is this really interesting ecosystem where Google will send buses to downtown San Francisco to bus 
Nooglers, I think what they're, is what they're called, <laughs> to Mountain View. Yeah. Right. right? And then they send them back every day. So it's the reverse commute. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's funny because now that's what I do here in Chicago, right? I'm reverse commuting. And I think it's interesting because you do have an influx of people who, you know, there are so many companies now opening up in places like Glen Ellen, which, by the way, has an amazing food oh. and drink scene. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so I think there is a world in which in the next couple of years, we're really going to see a change in that migration, I would say, right? Yeah. Where instead of going into the city to take advantage of those restaurants, you have people from the city saying, hey, I've heard downtown Lake Forest is really cool because it is, right? Yeah. Like, why don't we, there's something cool happening in, in Naperville this weekend. Why don't we go check that it out? That becomes the destination. That's right. Well, it's, it's so funny that you say that because so a lot of, a lot of my clients more and more are coming from, you know, they're relocating into the area. Mm -hmm. And where I think it used to be like, hey, my job's in Chicago. Um, we want to live in the suburbs. We want somewhere quiet. And it was almost like a consolation prize. It was almost mm -hmm. like, well, we're coming to Chicago, mm. and, but we need a place in the burbs. And now it's like, I mean, people will tell me like, I, I'm coming to Naperville. Like, right. I, I have people who, who come here they don't even have jobs here. Like they come here. They just want to live here. They just want to live here. Yeah, yes. it's, it's wild. You know, it's interesting you say that. We have had a few people actually. So Downers Grove, we have a location there. Mm -hmm. And it's a location where uh, we have quite a few young people. Okay. I think the younger audience is moving to Downers Grove. And we've, have, we've had a few people come to us and say, hey, I need a week pass mm -hmm. because I live in North Carolina or whatever, mm -hmm. somewhere in the South. And I'm moving to Downers Grove, and I need to work remotely there while I look for an apartment. Right. So that's exactly <laughs> to your point, where it's like people are seeking out these suburbs now and are coming here and just kind of, you know, making it work. I, it's going to be, I, th I think, 10 years from now, like I'm just super interested, especially just in my industry to, to, and your industry too, to look at that because like... So I, f I focus on residential real estate, but I've got partners on my team that focus on commercial. Mm -hmm. And that whole landscape has just absolutely turned upside down. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the vacancies yeah. in Cook County, yeah. and specifically the city of Chicago, yeah. for commercial office space, but also rentals, you know, uh, and so, but then try to find something in DuPage or Northern Will County right now. I mean, you can't. Yeah, yeah, no, it's interesting. I don't envy landlords right now, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I think it goes back to, again, right, there's been a transition and kind of a shift in what people expect professionally, right? People don't want to sign 10-year leases anymore, right. right? Because who knows what could happen next year? Yeah. What if there's another pandemic, right? right? What if World War III happens? <laughs> Right, we're living, I think, in a time where stability is really important to people mm -hmm. and being able to prioritize the things that they care about the most is really important to people. And so you have, you know, during the pandemic, there were folks who uh, were locked into eight-year leases and they were, you know, businesses shut down because of that, right? Because how can you sustain that, right? So I think there is a shift of people now who are saying, hey, I want a two-year lease. Uh, I want to stay close to home, and I'm not willing to compromise on those things, Yeah. right? And so if you're a company or a landlord who isn't able to be nimble yeah. and shift given what the market and your consumer is asking you for, I think you're going to have a lot of trouble, you yeah. know? So it's important to stay, uh, you know, be able to, to change with what people are asking you for. Yeah, it's, I, there's only, I think, I think every generation has a few, like, sort of big like sea change moments, obviously this. I is, hope so. <laughs> this is ours for. Well, I think so because you're right. It's total mind mindset shift, right? Yeah. Like where priorities all of a sudden are different. Yeah. Um, and and it's interesting too because I think we we kind of thought we knew what was going to happen, mm -hmm. and then we were talking about. It. I mean, you get so you're getting some. I, I mean, Elon Musk, you know, comes out, says like, "Nope, you're going to be back in the office. Like yeah. there will not be." you know, frequent remote work for, for our company. It's like, yeah. okay, so there's this like tug of war between sort of the way things were yeah. and maybe the way things people want them to be. And I think 
we're still figuring it out. Absolutely. I, I don't know that anyone is really in a place to make that call. Yeah. For people, right, it's such a personal call, but I will say I think it's important to give the option so that no matter what people choose, they feel like they are making the best decision for them and yeah. for their families, right? So things like, is there a place where I can work that's close to home, but it's still gonna help me further my career? Yeah. Right, like why does it have to be that I have to sacrifice one of those things? I think that's the question that people are asking themselves now because, you know, I don't, I don't think you need to make that choice anymore. No, absolutely. Well, I've loved this conversation. Um, I think, you know, if you're watching, listening, you haven't checked out Enclave yet, you need to get down here. Um, and I think we can extend kind of the same gesture that we did to our, our viewers of Sweet Home Chicagoland. But if you're watching Naperville Real Talk and you're interested, reach out to Ariana and her team uh, for special founders pricing, and they'd love to have you here. Thank you so much for having us here. Absolutely, this has been so fun. And, so and fun. tell us again uh, where they can, where folks can find you on the web and the address. Yeah, and everything. thank you. So enclavecoworking.com. We have a new beautiful website that I hope everyone will check out. We're at 218 South Main Street here in downtown Naperville. And you can reach us at 630-296-4575. Uh, call or text us and, and we'll take care of you. Awesome. Thank you so much. and look forward to seeing you again. Of course. Thanks, Chris. <laughs>